Turn loose the best bass fishermen in the world on one of the best bass fisheries anywhere, and you expect world-class bass catching action, right? Wrong. Not even the best bassers in the land can make them bite if they don't open their mouths. Today, our Bassmasters cameras are at Lake Seminole, the big Chattahoochee River impoundment near Bainbridge, Georgia. A year ago, David Fritz turned the bass world on with a four-day catch of 91 pounds, three ounces to win the Bassmaster BP Top 100 tournament. But that was last spring, before the big flood swamped everything. This morning, as 107 pros and their amateur partners check out for the $271,000 Bassmaster Top 100 here in late February, the fishing forecast is bleak. Well, in a word, I guess the conditions, you could say, are terrible. Last year, we saw Seminole at its best. It took about 92 pounds to win. I think this year, we're going to see Seminole at its worst. We've got rising, muddy water. Well, some places are falling by now. And the muddy water is filtered into all the little back bays. Very little clear water left. You know, it's 30, about 30, 31 degrees right now. This is Florida bass. Florida bass don't like cold weather. I'm looking for just a bite or two a day. Hopefully, there'll be good fish uh, each time we get a bite. But uh, I don't think you're going to see the weights that you saw last time. Sounds like these Lake Seminole anglers face a mission impossible test. Our Bassmasters camera crews have a tough assignment, too. More than one pro mentioned we'd be lucky to see a fish caught the next four days. But somebody always figures them out. I'm Bob Cobb. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back with the Seminole Top 100 Tournament from Bainbridge, Georgia. Concentration, determination, persistence. Three keys to becoming a vessels. successful professional bass tournament <laughs> actor. You better believe it. When conditions are so tough you don't right expect there. to get more than two or three bites all day, every cast is fish to the limit. Miss your bite and you miss out on a paycheck. Pick the worst possible fishing conditions. Cold, muddy water, a rising then falling lake level. Post cold frontal passage with air temperature dipping into the low 30s. Surface water temperature in the 50 degree range. Welcome to the Bassmaster Tournament Trail and the $271,000 Bassmaster Lake Seminole Top 100. The 107 pros and amateur partners entered in the February 22nd through 25th tournament agree on one thing. It's tough. But wait a minute. Isn't this Lake Seminole near Bainbridge, Georgia, where in March 1994, it took over 50 pounds just to make the top 25 <laughs> money winners? It's true. Yes. But as Tom Mann Jr., a Buford, Georgia-based pro will tell you, conditions make a difference. Tom's fishing the same spot where he caught over 70 pounds last spring. But this morning, it's all just a memory. High, muddy water rolling down the Chattahoochee and Flint Rivers tell the story. Even defending champion David Fritz, the Bass Angler of the Year, is uh, uncertain as to how to beat these conditions. Yeah, if fishing's just tough, you just gotta hang in there and hang with it. It's, uh, fishing is extremely tough. David is trying to duplicate the pattern and the catch that produced his win here last year. 91 pounds, 3 ounces, a BASS Top 100 record. That big. He's just wild. Staging He's fish are the target. Bass moving up for the spawning urge. He's fishing a shallow stump infested backwater off the Chattahoochee River Channel. In the cold water, a Texas rigged Zoom soft plastic lizard is working for a few bites. A zoom lizard strikes again. <laughs> Adapting to the different conditions, not trying to make it happen on last year's good holes may be the best bet. Mickey Bruce is onto something and in tune with the fish. Last March, Mickey fished outside grass lines in the main lake to weigh in 20 bass and 83 pounds, 13 ounces. That was only good for second place. Today, Mickey is way up Spring Creek where the water clarity is better. He's keying on the current break where a school of bass are feeding along an old abandoned powerhouse. A chartreuse colored crankbait is catching the more aggressive fish, but when the action slows, Mickey's pitching a jig into the eddy spot. The daily tournament limit is five bass that measure at least 12 inches. Nearby, Roland Martin, the 18-time winner on the BASS trail, has hooked a largemouth that surely won't need to be measured. A big bite will mean a lot in this tournament. 
Besides the added weight in the daily score, there's a $1,000 bonus for the big bass each round. Louisiana pro Gene Pizzolatto and amateur partner Joe Griner of Blackshear, Georgia, are both fishing Carolina-rigged soft plastic lizards. Amateur fishermen pay a $400 entry fee to fish behind the pros. They do not compete with the pros. The leading amateur wins a $19,000 Ranger bass boat powered with an OMC Evinrude outboard. First place in the pro division pays $45,000 in cash and prizes. Overall, fishing is spotty. This double fish catch captured by Bassmaster's cameraman Amos Postoak is a rare happening in this tournament. The cold water temperatures are holding the bass off the spawning beds, but some fish are moving into the bays off the Chattahoochee River, and the backwater sloughs are clearer. Sight fishing in the shallow water usually pays off in the spring, as Claude Fish Fishburn of Canton, Georgia knows. Even if the bass are not bedding, Fishburn looks for bass to cast a small lure to tempt a strike. Cruising bass are the target now, and Claude has zeroed in on a sandbar in a back bay. The bright background of the sand makes it easier to spot bass moving out of the grass. We've got a sandbar in the middle of a hydrilla field, and I've spotted a few fish cruising over the sandbar. So I'm gonna throw a little tube in there, try to lead them by about six or eight feet. I just saw one swim out of the grass. I'll throw it in there and try to lead them, and then pop the lure where it looks like something natural jumping right in front of them. A lot of times they'll eat it. Like that one. And when they get in the hydrilla, you've got two choices. You can go in there and you can get them, or you can let them run around in it and drag them out. But I'm using light line, so you really kind of got to be careful. Just let the rod play the fish and go down the hydrilla. Don't panic. Don't panic like most people would do. Just kind of let him swim around, ease him back out. If he won't ease out, let's go get him. We may have to go get this one. Very nice fish. Go right in here to him. And you don't want to get too close to the area because there's several other fish in the area. So we're just going to kind of work him out of the grass. This, nice that, job, man. Claude. We'll Team Grandma oh. might be a force to reckon with in this Seminole okay. Top 100. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters are coming right back, and we'll find out who's hot and on top. The pre-tournament poor mouthing and low-rated catch report set the stage for a so-so weigh-in. But the Bassmaster Lake Seminole Top 100 pros may have been playing a mind game with their fellow competitors. Defending champion David Fritz checks in with 16 pounds, 6 ounces. But the downside is he has only four bass, one shy of the daily limit. Last year's runner-up, Nicky Bruce, takes the early lead with five fish weighing 17 pounds, 14 ounces. But only 11 such limits will be scored. The best bag of the day and the tournament goes to Ron Shuffield of Arkansas, a three-time BASS Top 100 winner. The 24-pound, 12-ounce creel is anchored by the big bass of the day, an 8-pound, 15-ounce largemouth. But Ron isn't overly optimistic about the next three days. However, Claude Fish Fishburne, who's sponsored on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail by his grandmother, has Team Grandma's fans excited. Fish weighs a limit and 22 pounds, 10 ounces. He's in second place. Here's how the top 10 leaderboard stacks up after the day one weigh-in. Ron Shuffield owns a two pound, two ounce advantage over Claude Fishburn. Dion Hibden of Missouri ranks third with 18 pounds, 15 ounces, followed by Mickey Bruce and Carol Haygood, a well-known Florida sight fisherman. Defending champion David Fritz is in sixth place, over eight pounds behind the leader. But there are three hard days of fishing left. Tournament leader Ron Shuffield returns to the backwater slough off the Chattahoochee. Rattle. Yesterday, a rattle trap lipless crankbait reeled past grass clumps off the shoreline, produced a hefty creel. But not this time. Only one strike, a one pound, two ounce keeper, is caught later in the day. But Claude Fishburne has it going his way. Okay, here's the fish right here. Now, this fish is cruising, 
He's not anywhere near a sand spot or a bed, but he's cruising. Now he stopped. I'm gonna try to lead him by about three or four feet. Bring the bait right down to him. Here he comes, here he comes. This fish was just cruising on top of the grass. And I just made a long cast and she bit it. Incredible. Keep her up out of the grass. What a neat deal that was. I just led the fish by about probably four or five feet. And I brought the bait down to her. Oh man, she's running like nuts. <laughs> All right. And I'm using light line and this water's real clear. And the thing about sight fishing is, is there's a misconception that every fish that people catch sight fishing or bedding fish, and they're not. This fish was just laying on top of the grass. All right. She just hit that little green tube. It looks natural. And color really doesn't matter. If you're, if you're looking at the fish, you probably want to throw something that you can see. But if you're throwing just random casting, you probably want to throw something that just looks really natural. And uh, I also wear the protective Band-Aid on my thumb because I've been lipping so many fish here lately that you don't ever want to injure your lipping thumb. That's a key. Keep that in mind. At the day two weigh-in, Fish Fishburn lives up to his name. The Canton, Georgia pro puts 23 pounds, 15 ounces on the scales and takes over the lead and then some. David Fritz with his 17 pounds, 4 ounces and a two-day total of 33 pounds, 10 ounces moves up to second but he trails Claude Fishburne, the leader, by almost 13 pounds. Hey, somebody call Grandma. This could be Fish's breakthrough tournament. Rick Morris of Virginia jumps from 25th into third place, scoring 21 pounds, six ounces for a 29 pound total. Fishburne pockets a quick $1,000 bonus for the daily Big Bass, a seven pound, 15 ounce lunker. But Grandma, don't count the big money just yet. Day well, three, off. another turning point. And went and looked for bed and fish, and I went in the area where the bed and fish were, and the water had come up about a foot, and a little over a foot, and it was real off color, and I couldn't see anything. So I did the old deviation pattern where I go for broke and throw absolutely a crankbait. As a fallback and regroup pattern, Fishburn is casting along places, the main river I'm channel, probably trying to, to locate pre-spawn fish that may be moving up in preparation of the spawn. Sandbars and shallow points that provide a current break from a strong river flow are targets being probed with a medium-running chartreuse blue crankbait, the Bandit. Yeah, David Fritz so. is sticking with his stump bed, but he's changed he's lures to too. a white spinnerbait. David switched from the soft He's plastic lizard after here. amateur partner oh, David oh. Freeman of Nicholson, Georgia, caught a bass on a white blade bait. Yeah, reach the hand, get him. Just don't miss him. Be ready. Get him, get him, get him. Thank you. That fish <laughs> takes a lot of slack out of Fish Fishburne's 13-pound advantage. One catch, yeah, a big bite, and <laughs> bingo. The Thank Fritz you. Blitz is on a roll. And at the day three weigh-in, Claude Fishburne seemingly can't stop it. Two bass and five pounds, 13 ounces, probably won't hold the line against the Fritz charge. Don't you really admit, even though you're, you're a loose goose, don't you really feel that the pressure starts to mount after you get such a substantial lead as you had yesterday? Not until I called Grandma and she said, if you don't catch him, I'm going to fire you. Which, you know, his grandmother is his number one sponsor. And you did talk to her last night? I called her. Actually, she called me and uh, she said, so how did you do? And I said, just settle down, sit down. I'm leading it. Clunk. David Fritz has a solid bag of bass. Got to be 18-13 to take the lead from Fish Fishburne. Anyway. If that's it, 20 pounds, 15 ounces, Jackson! People, I'm telling you, these are incredible bass. There ain't a little one the in lead there. lead flip-flops. David Fritz goes two pounds, three ounces ahead of Claude Fishburn. Fritz three-day total jumps to 54 pounds, nine ounces. It's really a two-man tournament now. Carol Haygood in third place with 35 pounds, six ounces, is over 19 pounds off the lead. 
Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will continue in a moment with yeah. final round action in the Bassmaster Lake Seminole Top 100. Concentration, determination, persistence. The keys to catching bass in a tough tournament situation. And three most important words for sight fishing. When Claude Fishburne locks in on a bass, he is determined beyond words to make the fish bite. Here he is, here he is, right here. Here he comes. The casting that I do is just really a short little roll cast. I try to keep a low trajectory and keep the bait low to the water's surface. So when it does hit, it doesn't make this awful splash. And I try to be really quick when I'm casting because so many times the fish are moving, you've got to got to make a really accurate, fast cast to get it in front of them where they'll bite it. I'm making a good cast right here. Right here, right here. Yes! Yes! 35 minutes, and I hooked up. I'm gonna have to land him now. Drag him out of the grass. Oh, I don't guess that feels good or anything. Not a bad little bass. That is persistence. Could be ignorance, but I perceive it as persistence. Whew. See, color change. Keep that in mind. Buy every color they make. Final way, the Bainbridge in. Boat Basin Park. With a crowd on hand, over 3,000 eager for the leaders to come to the scales. Claude Fishburne arrives first. He has two bass. Now, we want to hold this. Wait a minute. He, we, the word is that Fritz does not have a fish. I don't know. That was two hours ago. I weigh him. Moop puts him in the lead. Six pounds and 12 ounces. He is your winner, unless Fritz or somebody else can come from behind. Okay. I feel like I should have won this tournament. I had two really good first days, and then the last two days I've struggled. You know, when you can't put it together for four days, you're very seldom going to win, and, and Fritz has a tendency to do that. He didn't have a fish at, what, noon yesterday and came in with 20 pounds. So, you know, I know he's not out of it. But we'll know in just a few minutes, because Fritz, I'm told, is headed this way. <laughs> No, I didn't catch one. <laughs> you didn't? Well, that's it. It's finally happened. A fish wins in a bass tournament. Claude Fish Fishburne, the champion of the Bassmaster Seminole Top 100, with a four-day creel of 14 bass and 59 pounds, 2 ounces. David Fritz hangs on to second place with 54 pounds, 9 ounces. Rick Morris claims third with another impressive 20-pound, 14-ounce last-day catch followed by former world champion Stanley Mitchell. In the amateur division, Larry Hutchins of Lake Oswego, Oregon, takes the honors. His 10 bass total of 25 pounds, three ounces, wins the $19,000 Ranger Bass Rig with a 150 horsepower Evinrude outboard. Right now, it's time for the pros that point. That is a nice The how-to section of the Bassmasters. Brought to you by Wrangler Rugged Wear. Geared for the outdoors. I've got a variety of equipment that I use, but I want to key on one thing, and that's confidence. Just because you're in shallow water doesn't mean you're going to catch every fish that you see. But you need to have the confidence level and think, hey, if I can see him, I can catch him. Let me show you what I use when I go sight fishing. Polarized lenses are an absolute must. You have a four inch ringworm, a four inch razor worm, a crawfish imitation, a G3 and a G4 tube lures, and a grub. Here you have the hooks and the weights that's necessary in rigging them. Keep everything light, keep it real simple. Don't get too confused in color. Throw something that you can see and that you think looks natural that the fish will probably aggress. It's better than top water fishing. And if you'll be persistent and if you'll take some time, learn to cast accurately and be patient you'll be successful. See you next time on the Bassmasters. Yeah! He's won his first Bassmaster tournament, Claude Fish Fishburne. 
thanks to the support and sponsorship of his grandmother, Catherine Roundsville of Canton, Georgia. Let's hear it for Team Grandma. No joke, Fish, you've got the last laugh. Next week, our Bassmasters cameras follow the pros to Santee Cooper Lakes for the South Carolina Invitational. Join us. You'll learn more how-to tips from the pros. For the Bassmasters, I'm Bob Cobb. See you all next week. Probably four or five feet. The Bassmasters has been brought to you by Lubri.